Hi, Billy. Right. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank Glad you. Thank you for coming. I can't wait to get my brain scanned. Well, <laughs> see what we see. It's actually very interesting. Really? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Our goal mm -hmm. is to really get rid of the term mental illness. It's yeah. like this is brain health. Right. And who doesn't want a better brain? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And as an entrepreneur, that's your most precious work. Mm -hmm. So tell me your story. You were in New York for a little bit and then yeah. you moved to Florida. Yeah, we had a little bit of, of a rough going to New York as a kid. Uh, my father, unfortunately, was a, a alcoholic and a drug addict. And so my mom thought that moving to Florida, <laughs> to Miami, would be a, a new start. Um, kind of moved right into uh, the, the den of, of all the, you know, drugs and alcohol. But we moved to a place called Opalaka in Miami, which is uh, a really bad place. They had a steel gate around the city up until... Um, just a few years ago. They called it the triangle because it was shaped like a triangle, actually. Uh, and they called it the Bermuda Triangle. We lived in the middle of that. The cops wouldn't come in there. It was killings, murder. I mean, as a kid, I would see people getting killed, people getting stabbed. And it was this normal everyday event, really. Um, and, How old were you when you moved from New York to Florida? I was six going on seven. You were six going yeah. on seven. Yeah. And so New York is stressful. Then yeah. you moved to Miami and right. it gets worse. Oh, it got way worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. I mean, it would be nice. My parents delivered newspapers at night. So they'd be nice when people try to break into the house and I'd have to go get a butcher knife and, you know, throw over the little dinette table, get my brothers and sister behind the, the dinette. Uh, one of my brothers hadn't been born yet. So just one brother and one sister at that time. And, you know, stand there all night with a butcher knife, you know, trying to protect me. You know, so, uh -huh. so yeah. Pretty hardcore uh, place. The crossing, the school crossing guards would rob you on the way to school. <laughs> and uh, the junior high school for that elementary school ended up getting closed down because of all the murders of the kids murdering each other. So it's pretty, <laughs> pretty rough spot. Yeah. So then what happens? So you know, one day um, I didn't have enough money for an ice cream truck. I mean, every day we were so poor we only were eating matzah. Uh, crackers with butter uh, and, and, and toast with Cairo syrup and whatever else anybody would donate us and dented cans from the grocery store for like four and five cents and stuff like that. And all my friends were going to the ice cream truck every day and I was like, we're so poor and they're poor. How can they go to the ice cream truck every day? And we're in the same neighborhood. Where are they getting this money? So one day I said, I'm going to just sell my toys. So I went and got this crate of all my broken toys and whatever I had. I was like, I don't even need toys. And I just went door to door asking for donations for my toys. Five cents, 10 cents, a dollar, whatever. And uh, I ended up, you know, having two handfuls of money. And I went and got some, I, well, I just wanted to get the bazooka bubble gum with the comic strip in it. And I got it and I said to myself, wow, I just realized something here. There's nobody coming to save me. I'm gonna have to save myself. And once I came to that realization, I knew I was gonna be okay. I love that so much. I think the one word, the first hallmark of self-defeating behavior is blaming other people for how your life is turning yes, out. Exactly. That's number one. And responsibility never means fall. It's just your ability mm. to respond. And it sounds like, how old were you? I was seven. You were seven when you realized no one's coming to save you. Yeah, I realized it. <laughs> yeah. I told my mother, I don't belong here, you know? And, um... I just realized what was going on in that neighborhood just didn't make any sense to me. I saw kids getting yelled at aggressively. I saw kids getting beat by their parents. And the next day in school, they'd be just as bad and rowdy. So I knew that the beatings and the yelling wasn't working. When I turned 12, my dad told me, you're gonna have to get a job and pay rent, believe it or not. By the time I was 13, I was making more than my parents. Interesting. So. <laughs> When I went through your history, the things I'm paying attention to, head trauma at 22, you're actually not driving, you're a passenger. Right. Somebody falls asleep at the wheel, it launches you through the windshield. Right. And even though you don't lose consciousness, 
How fast were you going? Do you have a sense? They estimated about 75 miles an hour and we hit them and they were doing approximately 50 to 50 fires. So yeah. Like so if you more. just think of the forces that were going on, you get launched. Right. So crash, yeah. your brain rattles inside your skull, mm -hmm. you get launched and then your body stops. Right. It's another inside your skull. There's a lot of sharp bony ridges Ooh, yeah. and your brain is the consistency of soft butter. Because when I saw your scan, I went, oh, I had a brain injury. Mm, yeah. so we'll see it. Right. We'll also see we can fix it. Mm -hmm. So, wow. um, and you had nerve damage mm -hmm. to your right eye. Yeah, um, it's numb right there. We have scans. All right. Hey, <laughs> we have scans. Oh man. <laughs> um, so we do a study called SPECT and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. Mm. It's different than a CAT scan or an MRI. They look at structure. Mm -hmm. We look at function. Uh. And I can tell if you need a structural scan, mm. you don't. Okay. But um, SPECT basically tells us three things. Mm. Good activity. Mm too little mm -hmm. or too much. Mm. And then my job is to balance it. Gotcha. And most psychiatrists never look at people's brains. Wow. So they make diagnoses based on symptom clusters with no biological information. Yeah. And I think that's insane. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're an innovator. You're, you're trying to see the future. Mm -hmm. And I knew 40 years ago that imaging was the future mm. of psychiatry, but my profession has dragged its feet. Mm. <laughs> so, right. so when I got to look 30 years ago, we started looking, I'm just like a little kid, right. so excited. Yeah. Um, nice. Cause you know, I, now I have your story. Mm -hmm. Now I can match your brain to your story. Mm -hmm. When we look at your scan, you had a traumatic brain injury. It affected your left temporal lobe. Wow. And I wonder if that comes and goes, but it's, I mean, it's clearly hurt. Mm. So the left temporal lobe is here. Mm -hmm. Your occipital lobe mm. back here. Um, and your parietal lobes. You mm. see these dents here. Yeah. You have a lot of really good brain function. Mm. So, and the holes, you don't have holes in your brain. They mean, that means it's lower in blood flow than it should be. Mm. Um, we can fix those. Okay. But I mean, it's, this is really clear. And so sometimes your memory is probably not as good as it could be. Yeah. And then you said the injury happened to your right eye. Yeah. So this is the right side. Mm. It's, it's your visual cortex mm. right here. Um, but I, I get a sense that the injury happened like this. So from the right back, because it hurt the other side of your brain. Mm. It, your brain's in a closed space. Yeah. It's got nowhere to go. Right. So if you get whacked here, we'll mm. often see trouble over here. Gotcha. My favorite scan is the one we might do four or five months from now. Mm -hmm. If you do what I ask you to do, yeah. this is how it can change. Wow. So virtually it can be normal. Gotcha. And normal is the wrong word. It can be healthy. Right. Your emotional brain mm -hmm. is still pretty busy. Mm. And it's a bit in a trauma pattern. Mm. Wow. So whenever I see this diamond, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I wonder if there was trauma. Mm. There was. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like it's really impacting have you ever seen a therapist for all this trauma stuff? No. And does it haunt you? Um, I can't say it haunts me. I, mean, I reflect on it a lot. Uh, people try to figure out how come I always have such an optimistic mindset or attitude. Um, you know, I really don't know. You know, um, I don't get depressed over the things. I don't get, uh, you know, do I feel like I, I'm saddened every now and then for what's going on in the world? Yeah. But at the same time, I just try to focus on when I focus more on providing solutions and finding solutions, it gives me some sense of peace. You know, I was reading that and reading how you're really doing great mm -hmm. overall. And this term post-traumatic growth mm -hmm. came to me. 
Wow. Is that a lot of people, what that would cause mm -hmm. is a lot of problems in their life. Mm -hmm. An excuse to drink, an excuse right. to use drugs, an excuse right. to not work, an excuse yeah. to be mad, an excuse. Right. Mm -hmm. But for you, it wasn't an excuse. It's like, what is it I can do right. to take care of myself? That's, that's and then what is it I can do to take care of others? Right. I that's love that. Focus. Yeah. Right. And that's the best way to deal with trauma is turn your pain into purpose. Yes. I always think of people in these four big circles. Biology, what's your brain like? Psychology, what's your mind like? And for some reason, from an early age, you were able to put that together. Yeah. Social circle, we're in a pandemic. Yeah. It's like, how's business? How's my relationships? All that matters. Right. And spiritual circle, which is, why the heck do you care? Yeah. <laughs> why do you think you're on the planet? What is your sense of meaning and purpose? Mm -hmm. How would you explain that? Well, I feel like I have a, a special calling to be of service to others. So I pretty much dedicated my life uh, to finding ways to help people. I built the largest uh, uh, girls basketball program in the state of Florida, this Lady Jaguars. We did AAU, Junior Olympics. I had 121 players and uh, every single player got a scholarship to college. The total scholarships over, averaged out to over uh, $12 million. Wow. Well, this year, all of my workshops and my lectures on my TV network. I'm doing them all for free instead of pay-per-view. So I'm just trying to find more ways to help people, guide people, be some type of a life coach for people, uh, point them in the right direction, teach them how to become researchers for themselves and make their own decisions and ask the right questions and, and look for answers. You have a television network? Tell yeah. me about that. Uh, well, you know, I don't, when I don't like things, I create my own. So I didn't like what was on TV. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I created my own TV network, Forbidden Knowledge TV, and it's on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, uh, iOS and Google Play Store and the web as well. Uh, it's doing very, very well, actually. So overall, resilient, concussion, we can make your brain better. Yeah. We're in a war yeah. for the health of our brain. The U.S. has 4% of the world's population, 15% mm -hmm. of the world's deaths. That is unacceptable. Wow. That is unacceptable for the wealthiest country on earth, but we are one of the sickest countries oh, on earth with obesity and diabetes and hypertension. And the government's not talking about, let's get you healthy. I know. They're talking about, let's control you. But it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. if you don't exercise, yeah. then you can't go to the ball game. Right. <laughs> or you can't go to work if you don't exercise. Yeah. Uh, it's so true. Questions? Um, man, you're pretty thorough. Um, if, I, if I go work your plan, how long do you think it would take me to turn around and, you know, improve my brain, you know, a few percentage points? Two months. Oh, wow. But really making sleep a priority, mm -hmm. that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, and then do things that help. Yeah supplements, hyperbaric oxygen, mm -hmm. table tennis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to start right away. Mm -hmm.